Loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Good morning to everybody. It's good to see you all uh, here this morning. You know, I was, this is just some food for thought. I found a good use for this mask. If you cut yourself shaving, you can hide it as long as you leave your mask on. So, so there is a little bit of goodness out of that. No, I try to, I did trim it though. So. Anyway, it's good to, good to be here. Uh, good to be back in God's house. Uh, happy Father's Day to everybody. Uh, this is a, a wonderful day that uh, uh, you know we've just we've set aside to honor our fathers and and uh, you know um, uh, we also have a heavenly Father and uh, we should honor Him every day of our lives. Our lives should honor Him as well. Um, the sermon we got this morning it talks a little bit about uh, our heavenly father and it deals with uh, uh, being a father ourselves and and, and leaving uh, something behind uh, you know it's interesting um, uh, a lot of fathers when they pass away there's several things uh, the kids they I don't want to say fight over but they would like to have whether it be some kind of uh, uh, memory or some kind of item that they'd like to keep and hang on to that reminds them of their father um, and you know and those things are, are good and okay to have uh, but knowing that God sent his only begotten son to die for us and to invest and we're going to talk about investing this morning but if you think about the investment that God has made for you and I through his son Jesus it is amazing what he's invested in. Uh, you know, throughout the years that I've been working, I've, I've made some good investments and some investments I've lost money on, you know. Uh, you, get in, you get to messing with high-risk stuff and <laughs> the market takes a downfall and it, 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 it hits it a little harder. But, you know, when you think about the investment that God has made in you and I, um, he is uh, a friend of mine. He said for many years, he said, God bankrupt heaven when he sent his son down to earth to die on a cross for us. But you know, if you think about the investment that God has made in you and I, it is the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. A lot of great things has happened in my life. But when Jesus Christ saved my soul, you know what? That has an internal impact 
forever. Um, in a way of announcements this morning, uh, about forgot Bobby, <laughs> Uh, the nominating committee, we need to meet uh, shortly after church. We'll just kind of congregate up here just briefly. Uh, so uh, those of you that's on the nominating committee, please just we'll gather up here just shortly after we leave church. Don't forget, um, we won't be having services tonight because it's Father's Day. Uh, if, you have, if you have time, you spend time with your family. Spend time with your father if he's still living. And, uh, you know, and just uh, enjoy your time with your family. Uh, don't forget the offering today. The ushers will have uh, our offering plates at the back of the church. Uh, the offering today goes to the Tennessee Baptist Adult Homes. I got that right, did I? So, uh, so the offering that you give today goes to them. Um, Wednesday night, we'll do online service again this Wednesday. And then we'll have our uh, services next week as well. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, so you be in prayer for that and you pray one for another. Uh, please remember all the requests that have been made uh, this week. Uh, does anyone else have a request or praise? Remember these. Remember these. Remember Mary's request. Don't let me do all the talking today, okay? Anyone else? Yeah, amen. Amen. Anyone else? I know many of you here this morning, uh, your father has already passed on and your mother maybe as well. Um, you know, we, sometimes all we have is memories. And uh, I enjoy those memories. My, my father is still living. Um, but I'm going to make every memory that I can. And I'm going to hang on to those memories. But you know what I found? The greatest thing of all, I know he's saved. I know my mother's saved. Someday this is all going to come to pass. And we're going to gather in heaven. There's going to be a great big reunion. A big old homecoming like we've never seen before. We won't have to worry. We won't have to wear masks. We ain't got to worry about rights. We ain't got to worry about cancer and sickness and uh, diabetes and heart conditions kidney stones brother mark you need to remember him in your prayer he's got he's battling kidney stones um all this trouble that we have all the sickness and all the aching we get uh, it's going to come to pass the devil and all his work and all the stuff he does to annoy, annoy us and to pester us it's going to be gone don't have, you know, amen to that. We get to heaven, you know, it'll, there'll never be any darkness. I don't, these times in my life, I don't like darkness. I don't like being at, at, at home. There has to be, uh, there has to be some type of light on, whether it's the TV or a hall light down the, down the hall. Um, I even like having a little bit of noise if a fan's blowing or something, but I don't like darkness. You know what? There'll never be no darkness when we get to heaven. And I thank God for that. Um, and you know, it's all because of what our Heavenly Father has done for you and I. Anyone else before we get... Amen. Remember, remember them in your prayers.
still pray for them. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? If not, Larry, would you lead us in prayer, please? If you have your Bibles with you this morning, let's turn to the First Thessalonians chapter number 2. First Thessalonians chapter number 2. Don't ask me to spell that. I spell it T-H with a period. Uh, anything past that, it, gets, it, gets a, it, it complicates my mind sometimes. I was aggravating uh, Mike Ogle and Chris this morning I said I had to I was trying to find Mephibosheth in the Bible and I spelt that thing every way but right and um, but I finally found it 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2 if you'll stand we'll read just a few verses uh, this morning in your hearing and we'll give you the thought that God has laid on our heart uh, for today and um, as we read after that we'll pray and I want you to uh, uh, pray um, for the lost. Most importantly, when we pray, uh, let's pray that as a church, uh, you know, we'll get back to being a church and being together. Um, it's good to see every. I mean, I'm telling you, it's good to see you all here this morning. And I know we have several others that are watching uh, from their homes, and you are deeply missed. Um, but you know we're still we're still connected. We've all got a blood relationship through Jesus Christ, and you know there's a spirit of God that connects us as well. So uh, you you continue to pray for our church, pray for the lost. Uh, we've got a lot of important things coming up really fast on us as a church. Um, pray for our nominating committee. Uh, we got to put that together really quick. So you you pray for that. Uh, Bible school and the upcoming things as well, so you continue to remember that in your prayers. First Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want to read to you. Um, uh, just We're going to read a few verses, uh, but we'll back up and catch some at the beginning of this chapter. I want to start reading here in verse number 8, and notice what Paul has written unto them. He says, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. For, for ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And as you know how we exhorted and comforted 
and charged every one of you as a father doth his children, that you would walk uh, worthy of God who hath called you unto the, his kingdom and glory. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer today, thanking you, Lord, for this uh, blessed day, God, that you've given us. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for uh, sending your Son to die on a cross for our sins. Lord, we are so thankful today for this church. We are thankful for every, every home that is represented here today. Lord, we are thankful for those that are still unable to come. God, that you would just help them in their lives, help them in their needs. Lord, we just pray that uh, as we look in the Scripture today, Lord, if there's anyone that may be listening uh, that is lost, God, that they would see that need to accept you as their Lord and Savior. As we pray today, we pray, God, that, uh, that as we go forward out these doors, that uh, the Word of God would uh, have its place in our lives. Help us, Lord, just to, uh, just to continue the, the great work that you have given us to do. Lord, help us, God, to make uh, the right decisions and the right choices in the upcoming uh, days and weeks and months as a church. Lord, we just pray that, that as we look in the Scripture here today that we could, we could see your love. And God, we could see your caring and your, your giving that you've given us uh, uh, throughout our entire lives. Lord, as we pray, we want to thank you for all the answered prayers and all of the many blessings that you've given us. And Lord, we're so thankful, God, uh, the, for your precious Son, Jesus, that you sent unto us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. As we look in the scripture here this morning, uh, you know, I, I opened uh, just a few moments ago and we talked a little bit about uh, things that a father may leave behind. You know, it, 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 you know those things could come in, in many uh, different things. They could come in the form of, 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 of a gift or, or some kind of, uh, a, maybe a picture, or maybe uh, memories, or maybe, uh, you know, like a pocket knife, or, or anything uh, that would have, uh, maybe not, it may not be worth much to someone else, but to you, it is, it is worth a lot, it means a lot to you. Um, when I was thinking along the scriptures this week, and praying, and, and searching out the scriptures, I, I found this scripture here that Paul uh, had written uh, uh, under the Th Thessalonians. And it was interesting that in verse number 11, what he said unto them, he said, As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. You know, uh, if we think about that for just a moment, if you notice the three parts of what Paul has written unto them, he said, we exhorted, comforted, and charged every one of you. Now, uh, if you think about that for just a moment, uh, you know, Paul, uh, Paul, we know the life of Paul and how that he, under his conversion, uh, how that he had changed and uh, how that God used him in the ministry. Uh, and when you look at the life of Paul, Paul, uh, you know, we don't know much about his life outside of the church and preaching. And uh, but you know, Paul also left us behind some things that we can uh, we can look at and that we can, uh, I guess, glean from, uh, that we can gather from, and it's it's God's precious word. Uh, and you know, when Paul was treating them, he was treating them like uh, a, a, a father doth his children. Now, uh, and when I say that, he wasn't trying to belittle them in any way, but he was trying to care for them. He was trying to. Uh, share with them and he was trying to guide them in the right ways that they should go now it's interesting when you back up just a few verses we didn't read these uh, but I want to share them with you this morning in verse 3 he says for our exhortation was not uh, was not of deceit uh, nor uncleanness nor in guile now uh, what Paul's telling him he said you know we didn't try to uh, we didn't try to lure you. We didn't try to tempt you. We didn't try to offer gifts unto you. But we just, we just, we come to you uh, with the truth, and we come to you with the gospel. And and uh, and and when he goes on to say, but as we were allowed of God 
to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God which try our hearts. Uh, and Paul's enforcing to them, you know, what we've given to you and what we have shared with you would come from God himself uh, directly. And you know, ain't that amazing that when we read God's Word uh, and we start studying in it, and, and you know, hopefully for long we'll get back in Sunday school and our Sunday school teachers begin to, uh, to teach God's Word again. Ain't it amazing that when you find yourself in God's Word, how that it moves and speaks to your heart. Uh, how that it guides and gives you instruction. How did it, how did it gives you comfort in the times that you need comfort how that it gives you instruction in the times that we need instruction and how uh, and you say preacher what is instruction well uh, sometimes it's how to do things uh, and sometimes it's how to uh, not do things amen I, you know what I learned a lot uh, in my life of, of, how, of doing things wrong and learning from those things uh, and finding the right way to do those uh, and you know it all came from instruction uh, but when you think about what Paul is giving to them uh, notice this that in verse 7 he says but we were gentle among you you know I'm thankful for the spirit of God you know that sweet spirit of God is gentle and caring and loving uh, when it guides you and I and and you know and he goes on to say this notice in verse 8 uh, he said so being affectionately a uh, desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls. And when I read that verse, immediately inside of me, my soul began to stir. And you know what? I began to get those gospel goose, uh, goose uh, uh, pimples and bumps up and down my back. And a cool chill just entered all around me. And you know what? And I read that verse, and I began to think about how much that God has invested in me. And what Paul is saying unto them, he said, not only... Did we share with you the gospel? Huh? But we also invested our time with you in sharing uh, and teaching and loving huh? and fellowshipping and all those things in that. Huh? Ain't you thankful today that uh, there was a God in heaven huh, that saw your need huh? and He saw my need huh? and He saw that we had a need to be saved, huh? a need that we were lost and undone without Him, how that uh, sin was in our lives. Huh? And through that investment of sending His Son in that, uh, He's invested so much in us so that we could have the ability to have forgiveness of sins. Uh, uh, so that we could have the ability uh, uh, to have our name written in that Lamb's book of life. Uh, uh, so that we, when we lay our heads down at night, uh, uh, we don't have to worry. Uh, uh, we don't have to lose sleep uh, uh, worrying about dying and going to hell. Uh, uh, so that we uh, uh, don't have to worry. We We've got a Father in heaven that loves you today. He gave you His best today. Listen, when it comes to giving in that, I know that our earthly fathers, and I'll gather you mothers in there too, you know what? They've given so much unto you growing up. And listen, I know that there's some dads and there's some moms. You know what? They fail in many aspects of our life. There's been many a times that I've failed. There's many a times that you know what I've not done my best uh, uh, for my family or the or, or my kids and those things and that. But you know what? I love them with every ounce that I have. Uh, I try to give the best that I've got to them. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I may have failed them uh, in times in my life. I may have failed this church uh, and may have failed you in that. Uh, but we serve a heavenly Father today. That you know what? And not one thing or one aspect of His life has He ever uh, failed you and I. Now you know what I look at that? He's undefeated. He's never done wrong. Everything he's done has been good. You know what? Sometimes in our lives when we think about what Paul said, he said not only the gospel, but we've put our own souls because ye were dear unto us. I want you to think back right now. There's times in your life, even in this church or in prior churches or or wherever you may 
have been or wherever you've grown up. Uh, uh, you've had church members, uh, uh, deacons, uh, uh, Sunday school teachers, whoever it may be in that. You know what? Uh, they invested in you. Uh, you say, preacher, why would they invest so much in that? Uh, it's because of the love uh, that you have not only for God, uh, uh, but for people. You know what? That leads right into the nominating committee, brother. Amen. I'm thankful throughout the years of my life from the times that I can remember. Not only did I have parents that invested in me, not only did I have family that invested in me, but I had churches around me wherever I went took time and invested in me. You know what? If you want to win somebody to the Lord in that, you invest a little in them and you know what? And you'll get a return. I thought about... uh, I said Mephibosheth. I thought about uh, Mephibosheth and his life. When you go back and if you want to read, if you want to turn there real quick, we'll, we'll share with you just a, f- a few minutes. Uh, but Mephibosheth in, in 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse number 4, it says, And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet, He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. Now if you think about that, that is a tragic scene. An innocent young boy injured and harmed because of, I guess what you look at is traditions. And this young boy, even at that young age, the Bible says he was lame at his feet. But yet, you know, thanks be unto God, we look at, we look at, we've got another example we're going to use this morning uh, in our hearing. But you know what? I know David failed in several aspects of his life. I know that there was aspects of David's life. He failed with his children. And I know that he, that he done all the, some things wrong in that. But you know what? He did have a love for God. And he did have a heart after God. And when I thought about what he done for Mephibosheth, I'm about to get that and all mixed up this morning, okay? I told, I told Mike this morning, I said, now I was trying to, uh, 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 I couldn't spell Mephibosheth. And now my phone has its own uh, 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 you know how it automatically stores things in your phone, your words and stuff? I've got a new new name for Mephibosheth, okay? It don't sound too pretty, but it's in there, okay? But Mephibosheth, David didn't know him anything. David didn't have to give him what David got him. David didn't have to restore in him all that he restored unto him. But thanks be unto God, David had a love uh, that God has for you and I. You know what? There's times in our lives God has restored us. Uh, God, things that God has given us that we've not deserved in that. But God loves you and I here this morning. Uh, think, think about this. Turn with me to 2 Samuel if you want to. And I want to read in verse number 9. And David said, and, da- and, and David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto him David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness, now notice this, the kindness of God unto him. This is not David's kindness. This is God's kindness. You know, sometimes man's kindness can be mean, amen? You just cut somebody off in the middle of the road up here, you run a red light or something, and you'll find out how somebody's kindness really is anymore. You, you know what? Even going through Walmart sometimes you can find out who, who's kind and who's not. But David said, I want him to experience the kindness of God. I want him and his family to know that God is a God of love. That God is a God of caring. God is a God of watching out for us. And notice this. And the Bible says, And the king said unto, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machar, the son of Amil in Lodibar. <laughs> if this ain't a father figure, I don't know what he is. 
You know, sometimes we find ourselves in Lodi Bar. Sometimes you've got family members that's in Lodi Bar. Sometimes you may know somebody uh, that's in Lodi Bar. Sometimes you may find yourself there. I'm glad God knows where we're at 24-7. He don't need GPS. He don't need Google. Laurie had to get some directions yesterday. and I don't, You know, I tried to help her the best I can. And I think at one point in time the phone died. I'm glad God's signal never goes off. I like this. King King David sent and fetched him. Boy, ain't you glad we've got a Heavenly Father that sometimes in our lives He'll go fetch us. I mean, when you don't deserve it, He'll go fetch you. When, you, when, it's not, when, you're, when nobody's obligated to help you, when the world is just trodden you down and beat you up and left you for dead, there's a God in heaven. I mean, what a perfect father figure that says, you know what, go and fetch him, that I may show the kindness of God unto him. You know what I found out? Mephibosheth had a son. His name was Micah. You know what else I found out? Micah had four sons himself. You know what I picture at the dinner table of the house of Micah? Talking to his four young boys. Son, there's a God in heaven. One day that saw, that saw us out in the way off place. And he just wanted to show us a little kindness. And he fetched your grandfather out of a house that he never should have been in. But you know what? I think about not only to those four sons of Micah, but I think about the generations that had an impact on their life from there down. Do you have, let me ask you this, you've got memories, you've got memories that your father has passed something down to you. You've got memories this morning of maybe a grandfather has passed down to you and you know what, I, I, it doesn't have to be spiritual, it doesn't even have to be church related, okay? But there's things that they've taught you and you, you've passed them down and you know what, there's things that I've tried to teach my children and I've tried to teach them, it's not that I know everything and the Lord knows I don't know nothing, it's because somebody had passed something down unto me. And what I'm getting at is this, as a church and as a Christian today, we need to leave behind with our children, the grandchildren, the community and all those around us and that, that there's a God in heaven that loves them and sent His Son to die on a cross for their sins. Not only was David showing the kindness unto Mephibosheth, David affected future generations. The first generations around us today that needs to be affected by God, it's now. I thought about, and I know it's a parable, but I can't all, you know, anytime I'm around and I'm thinking about Father's Day, I always think about that boy that went to his daddy and wanted his money. The prodigal son. You know what, we've, we've labeled that all of our lives, the sermon on the prodigal son. I think the sermon was more about the father. I know that was a parable that Jesus gave. But think about the generations that that would have affected. Son, there was one day in my life I walked away from my father. Took all that was due to me and it didn't take, very, it didn't take long at all and I spent all I had and I was down to nothing. And I was eating basically garbage. He said, then I remembered my father's house has food enough. I could just go live as a servant. And I'm paraphrasing. And you know, when that son came back, he didn't go out like he he didn't go out like he left. He came back with the world all over him. But you know that father loved him just the same as he left as when he got back. 
You know, if when you look at these examples that I've given you this morning, if we want to raise our children better, raise them like God raised us. We want to help our future generations. We want to help our children and our church and all of those around us. Show them the kindness that only God can give. You know what? Maybe during the sermon this morning, God brought somebody to your heart. Say, preacher, they need to be fetched. They need to be fetched. God knows where they're at. You know, Ziba... Ziba got blessed as well. He had to work from Mephibosheth. But you know what? Ziba and his, his sons and his servants, they got to eat off the land that they, that they, that they worked for, for, uh, uh, for Mephibosheth. You know what? God provided for them and they didn't deserve it. You know, maybe there's somebody here this morning. God's trying to fetch you. You know what? He's fetching you because He loves you. Let's stand for a moment. <clears throat> Thank you, Pam. She plays softly. You know, I'm not going to... God knows your heart today. God knows your needs in your life. God knows what's going on. I'm glad that He fetched me. I'm glad that He knew where I was at. I'm glad He had a love for me that passes all understanding. If you're here today and you need to pray, you come and pray. Ain't nobody going to bother you. Ain't nobody going to ask you what's going on. That's between you and the Lord. You can pray right where you're at. Say, preacher, I know somebody that needs to be fetched. We all do. He knows where to get them. As she plays. Good to be. Uh, it's good to feel God's presence this morning. You know, I, it makes me feel like I've been at church. Okay, and um, you know, God, God knows your your prayer requests. He knows the needs in your life. Uh, you know, the thing about God, I love. He's always on job, always on the job. Okay, he never, he's never sick. He's never felt bad. He never has to take a vacation. He never has to. He never has to go to the break room or anything else. He's always on the job. And you know, if you think about that, how much good that he's given us in this life. I know we have our heartaches. I know we have our troubles. I know we have different things that affects us a lot. But when you add it all up, it's good. It's just good. That's all I can say. Don't forget our services. We won't be having services tonight. Uh, so you spend time with your family and, and enjoy them. Spend time with your fathers if he's still living. Uh, spend time with your mothers. Don't ever leave a mother out, okay? Because uh, you know that's the way God intended, a father and a mother. He's given them to you. They're gifts. Uh, just as, as parents, you know, those children you have, they're gifts. God gave them. To, they're on loan, okay? They're not yours forever. They're on loan. So you remember that. Don't forget uh, our offering today. If you want to leave something in the plate back there, it goes to the uh, Tennessee Baptist Adults Home. So you remember that. 
Uh, don't forget uh, nominate, <laughs> nominating committee. We'll meet up here briefly right after church, so those of you on the nominating committee, you can come up and uh, we'll meet here briefly at that. Uh, don't forget, uh, Wednesday night service we'll do online. Then we'll, Sunday morning, Sunday night services next week. You'll be praying for that and uh, pray one for another. Gerald, do you dismiss us in prayer, please?